What's going on boxing fans? It's Julian Williams with the Distance. I'm here with another video today, um, or for a video today, excuse me. I'm so used to saying that. But I have I have not made a boxing video in two weeks. So, you know, I had to come back today and um, put my face on the screen and um, do this prediction for um, this upcoming matchup. You know, this matchup kind of crept, crept up on me. I, I initially intended to come back um Sometime, um, I wanted to come back tomorrow actually, Thursday. I wanted to come back, but um, you know, I wanted to come back. I wanted to do a, a I wanted to do you know, a couple prediction videos, but um, the, the other five I wanted to do this week, um, end up getting postponed. So I'm just gonna do this one, and I'm gonna do another prediction video today, and um, I'll be back, you know, full time next Monday. I'll be back full time. I'm back on YouTube, um, ready to then go back to work. I'll continue my top five next week and um I'll do some more fancy matchups and predictions and stuff next week. So be on the lookout for all that stuff because I am back now. Um but anyway, let's get on to this matchup. Devin Alexander the Great versus Juan Urango, light welterweight unification bout. Um Overall, um, really good matchup, especially in a stack division like the light welterweight division. You know, um, you have a you have two um, you have a young champion who's not defending that championship yet, and you have a you know you have another um, champion who who pretty much has the experience factor in this matchup is taking on some good fighters. You know, Miguel Cole, not Miguel Cole. I'm sorry, um, he was trained by Van Lisa Cole. That's what I'm trying to say. He's trained by Van Lisa Cole. He's taking on Randall Bailey. He's taking on Andre Berto at um, welterweight. He's taking on Ricky Hatton, Herman and Gojo, quality fighters. You know, um, but Devin Alexander, on the other hand, took on a fighter with a lot of experience under his belt and has, and has fought some quality fighters himself and Junior with it. The feeling, which which was a real upset upset to me because I I I thought Wither was going to win the matchup. You know, I thought Wither was gonna win. I thought Wither was just too awkward, but hit, but um, Devin Alexander did do a good job of holding his own against that style of Junior Wither. So we do see that um, Alexander does very well. You know, um, adjusting the styles and um, fights because it did. You know, it's like it's hard to have a pretty good performance against the Junior Wither. You know, um, a lot of fighters, especially at the level of Alexander, would probably struggle against Junior Wither and. Devin Alexander was able to hold his own, um, but um, the matchup like this, you know, was very intriguing because a lot of people, including myself, especially the the boxing public, are are really anticipating um, Devin Alexander's first defense of his WBC light welterweight championship. You know, um, I thought he maybe he'd take on a couple of fringe contenders during that kind of during that time off, but you know, you know, he didn't. You know. Um, but at the same time, Urango, you know, hasn't fought since August as well. So, right there, it's kind of an even, it's a level playing field right there. So, um, honestly, um, in the mat onto the matchup, Juan Urango really needs to apply pressure to um, Devin Alexander. He needs to bring the fight to Devin Alexander. You know, um, I know, like, Juan Urango's style... You know he he does you know come forward, you know he does square up, he th and pretty much most of his shots consist of short right and left hooks. You know um, you know um, and most of the time with Juan Urango, he zeroes in, zero zeroes in on fighters, but there are times that Juan Urango, you know, takes I mean takes shots that he doesn't see see coming. Juan Urango, I think um. And this fight just needs to apply constant pressure to Devin Alexander and make it a fight that Devin Alexander has never, you know, never been in. He needs to take Devin Alexander in the deep waters, which he will do. He is, you know, um, Juan Urango has a really good chin. You know, he has a good chin, you know, um, and, he, and he can apply constant pressure. He's there to fight the full 12. This fight, you know, is going to be no different. Juan Urango is going to be there to fight the full 12. So in, in this matchup, he wants to he wants to apply constant pressure and he wants to throw the right hook. He wants to throw um the right hook because if he throws his right because um Devin Alexander, 
and I don't know if it was just the Junior Wither match, but in the match before that, Devin Alexander has shown to be um, a bit susceptible to to a right hand. Sometimes you know he keeps his hands out, you know he kind of keeps his hands a little forward, and um, and he's open. He's open to um, a right hook or a left hook. Juan Urango, um really needs to, um, who I believe is the stronger fighter of the two. I think he does really need to drive him to the ropes, and um, and pretty much go to the body. If he goes to the because Devin Alexander has never fought a twelve round fight. You know, um, this is you know if he goes to the body later, it could be it could work to um, Urango's advantage later on in the fight because you know just because the fact that Alexander has never been past you know. 10 rounds. I don't believe he's been past 10 rounds. So the fact that he's never been past 10 and um and if he goes and him going to the body it could work as an advantage because it could wear down Devin Alexander. You know, and as well and another thing that he does need to do, he does need to um throw his jab more. You know, um Rango really needs to throw his jab more. Um, he has shown that he's shown to have a pretty good jab, a decent jab. He does really need to throw it more. Devin Alexander in this fight. Devin Alexander needs constant movement in this fight. He needs to really, he he really needs to um, just have constant movement because Juan Urangel does not throw shots when he's not set. You know, um, look at look at most of his fights. Juan Urangel when his feet aren't set. He he doesn't throw, you know. Um, he has to be set, you know, to throw shots. Devin Alexander needs to box on the move. Devin Alexander does a good job of um of shortening his right hand and um and um landing. You know, he does a very good job of of um throwing um the right hand. You know, um, Juan Urango does get, tend to get hit sh hit with shots that he doesn't see, that he doesn't see coming. And Devin Alexander has the hand speed for that. He has the hand speed to um, get your angle with a shot he doesn't see coming with the right hand to be specific. You know, um, he does need to. I think that um, Alexander does need to get his shots off first, which um, is something that he does do. Um, he does get his shots off first. He needs to get his shots off first, and he does. And pretty much, he just needs to move around. He needs um, constant movement. He needs. Um, and really, um, he needs to box against Juan Urango because Juan Urango has trouble against fighters that box against them. And um, Devin Alexander can box very well, and I think that in this matchup, he he just needs to box. He needs to um, box. He needs to just apply constant. I mean, not apply constant pressure, but just use his boxing ability, and it could win this matchup. But um. Really, it's it's a hard matchup to score because um, Alexander is young. He hasn't been past you know ten rounds, and other than not being past ten rounds, you know, um, I honestly don't believe he's faced a pressure fight, a fight who could apply constant pressure like Juan Urango, who's going to be there the full twelve. You know, um, Alexander does have pretty good hand speed. He does have pretty good boxing ability, but at the same time, you know, um. He hasn't really had that matchup for him to prove it. You know, um, the phrase among a lot of um, people in Hollywood, um, when um, you know a certain some when a certain thing happens, like say um, say um, you're you're an actor and um, you're in a movie, and the movie does well overnight or whatever, and you and all of a sudden you know you you become um, you know a, a star or whatever. I think that this could be that showing. You know that um, performance by Alexander that can make him that star because you know what they say every day a star is born. But at the same time, you know, in, in the ring, you know, it takes one, you know, it takes one night, you know, one night for a star to be born. You know, after years of sacrifice and dedication. In this matchup, it's really hard to score, but um, I may be off by a long shot. I initially, initially, I went. I went with Alexander when I thought about this matchup, but I me, mean, I'm gonna go with Juan Urango in this matchup. I think that Juan Urango could zero in on Devin Alexander and um and get the knockout probably in the twelfth round. I think that I just think that 
Juan Urango's constant pressure and his, cons and his consistency with it can um, give Alexander a lot of trouble. And um, really, I just think that um, I I'm just going to go with um, Juan Urango in this matchup. You know, he's more experienced, you know, good stamina, good power in both hands. And, and you know, the the constant pressure and, um, and um, you know, his constant pressure and um, stamina really says it all for me. You know, um, Devin Alexander could win this matchup, but I'm going to go with Juan Urango with knockout in probably the 12th round. But, um, anyway, that's kind of a long shot there, but... I'm just going to go with Urango. But anyway, that was the distance. Thanks for watching. Peace.